Hey folks, in today's video we're going to be discussing a few mysteries in depth. So, if you're ready, we have a lost game show, a lost football game, and the case of a mysterious photo floating around the internet. If you want to see more lost media content, a like and a subscription always helps the channel out and lets you see more of the content you want to see. So without further ado, let's get into it. Split second! And now, the host of our show, Tom Kennedy! Hello there. Thank you. Good to see you all. Welcome to Split Second. Five beautiful cars back there. And one of those cars could possibly be driven away by one of our three contestants. First of all, let's say hello. In the Lost Media community, nothing brings us together quite like a search for an obscure game show. Well, one of the more interesting ones has to be for the show Split Second, which aired on ABC in the 70s and starred Tom Kennedy from shows like Name That Tune and Password Plus. The game show involved a very fast-paced format where three contestants would be asked a set of three questions with a central theme around them and acquire money for doing so correctly. This goes for a few rounds and then the game has what's referred to as a countdown round, where contestants have different amounts of questions they need to answer correctly based on the amount of money they already have. While the show did get a reboot in the 80s, and the pilot for a different reboot with a different host does exist on YouTube, the actual main show is not completely available. The show hasn't been rerun since 1975, and as luck would have it, this show aired right before ABC stopped their tape wiping practices, meaning that a good chunk of these episodes are destroyed. Quite a few photos are released, giving us a good idea of what the set looked like, and there are even a few full episodes released on YouTube, though obviously nothing close to the full three year run. Split Second is even getting a reboot pretty soon on the Game Show Network. Perhaps they have a few of the tapes and plan to air reruns of the original to build hype. Yeah, that is kind of wishful thinking, but honestly, most other paths to finding this show seem like non-starters to begin with. In episode 1 of my Lost Media series, I briefly discussed a lost football game. Now, if you haven't seen that video, you might be thinking to yourself, aren't most football games lost? And the answer to that is... probably? But there is a huge difference between a lost football game from the 1950s and a lost matchup between two top 25 teams from 2016. I'm of course talking about Georgia at Ole Miss from that year. If you don't know football, you might not know the significance of this game, and honestly, even if you do know football, you might not know the significance of this game. But the reason this is so important to find is because it's essentially a time capsule. This game took place in the first year of Georgia head coach Kirby Smart's tenure, which was his worst in terms of win-loss record, as he was still in the rebuilding phase. At this point now, they've won two national championships in a row, but at this time, Kirby was still unproven as a head coach. And on the other sideline was Hugh Freeze, still hot off the best two-year period in the history of football at the University of Mississippi. The game ended with Ole Miss crushing Georgia by a score of 45-14, which, to this day, is the worst loss of Kirby Smart's career. As a matter of fact, I made episode 1 in my Lost Media series almost two years ago, and Georgia has only lost one game since that video was made. Hugh Freeze, on the other hand, is now the head coach at Auburn, after only winning five games in 2016 and being fired the next season over sexual misconduct, using a university-issued phone to call an escort service. As you can see, this game looked to be a turning point for both schools, as it clearly looked like Old Miss was in a better position after the game happened, only for them to flame out the rest of the season and for Georgia to get its act together and finish the season with 8 wins. There are only a few small clips of this game online in the form of highlight videos, but the entire game is nowhere to be found. One of these highlight videos was uploaded by the official Old Miss channel and seems to use their own in-house cameras and not ESPNs. And the audio comes from the University of Mississippi's own radio broadcast, so that video doesn't exactly help. There was also a documentary episode about this game, but the only footage shown is up-close footage that isn't shown in the broadcast. The only footage of the actual broadcast is from a two-minute highlight video, and any audio from the game is replaced with a music track. As for trying to find this in an official capacity, luck isn't exactly on our side either, as the SEC network typically only reruns the big games and stays away from ones that generally weren't competitive. 
And even if they did rerun this, their schedule for rerunning old games is inconsistent at best. If you have any footage or know where any might be, leads are always appreciated in the comments. Perhaps many of you remember a simpler time, before AI ruined schooling, and before we decided to allow dementia patients to occupy the Oval Office. A time when Walmart was more vibrant and colorful. Yeah, it may seem a bit odd to hyper-focus on something so specific as the Walmart designs from a decade and a half ago, but they really have become something so nostalgic. It seems that the interior design of a lot of restaurant and retail chains has become a lot more uniform and, well, bland to be honest. And I guess that can be expected when minimalism as a trend seems to be at its peak. But in the 2000s, it was the height of in-your-face marketing and bold interior design. However, there's been a photo that's been passed around recently, most notably in nostalgia compilations on TikTok and it's gotten me to really reflect on the epidemic of Walmart McDonald's disappearances. In this photo, we see the golden arches, which is a common staple of McDonald's branding, but here they're being creatively used as the entrance to the restaurant. There's hollow windows lining the wall with decorative flowers in them, and a bench out front with Ronald McDonald sitting on it. On the inside, you've got your standard tables and drink fountain, and the menu and cash register is all standard, except for the decorative red neon sign that says McDonald's. All of this decor screams 90s slash 2000s, and there's a certain charm it has despite how odd some of the choices seem. For something in the back of a Walmart, this is actually pretty interesting. This photo is one of those eerie photos you'd see on like one of those liminal spaces accounts, and honestly it brings me back a lot of memories. Later Walmart McDonald's locations were built at the front of the store in one of three-ish designs that I can tell. And most of these back of store variants with the arches were either replaced with a more modern design at the front of the store, closed, or replaced with another restaurant like Subway. But specific to me, the real reason this brings back memories is because I believe I actually went to this specific McDonald's in the picture as a kid. And I set out to prove that this was the actual one I went to once. I had memories of visiting a Walmart McDonald's at the Walmart in... some town in Alabama. Sorry, you're not getting that for free. Now, that's pretty far from me, and so this would be a challenge, but I knew I had seen this setup before somewhere. Even if it's not the exact one, it's very similar to the one I went to as a kid. Now, I went back to that Walmart in 2017, and there was no longer a McDonald's, but in the back of the store where the McDonald's was, there was an outline of a McDonald's sign, suggesting that a sign was taken down. This was when the deli they put back there was under construction. If you look at Google Photos for that location, you can see what looks like a McDonald's being placed under construction at the front of the store, which seemingly disproves that there was ever one in the back of the store, let alone this exact one. But Walmart has steadily been moving their in-store restaurants to the front of the store for, at this point, years. In fact, my local Walmart even moved the subway from the back to the front not long ago. And besides, whatever was in this photo was already taken down in the store by the time I went there in 2017. It was really bothering me that I kept seeing this photo all over the internet and didn't know where it came from. So I decided to go to this Walmart. No, I'm not joking. I took this photo because originally I thought the post you see here is like the one in the original. Apparently it's not however and we'll get to that. But as for the structure of the building itself, the girders do look the same. However, the lighting doesn't and no matter where this store is, that could present a problem. Most Walmarts did replace the lighting after the rebrand they had in the 2010s, however. And from what I can tell, the overhead lighting seen in this photo is present in almost no Walmarts today. So the Walmart this photo was taken in almost certainly doesn't have the light fixtures it has in this photo. But as you can see, the post in this photo is way too far from the back wall to be the same one in the original photo. I was crushed when I found this out. People have been trying to find this McDonald's for years, and it's still a mystery, as it's not the Walmart I thought it was. Supposedly. That was when I discovered this photo, posted on, as fate would have it, a Liminal Spaces Twitter account. And it's another angle of the original photo, and the Twitter account Non-Standard McDonald's, which is one of my favorites, has been looking for this McDonald's for a while. 
In fact, from what I can tell, the reason this photo has been popping up more recently can be traced back to non-standard McDonald's original post showing multiple angles. When I found this out, I did some digging and uncovered a few more angles of the same photo, and this actually gives us a lot to work with, but at the same time it disproves my original theory and location of the picture I took. This angle shows the refrigerated section to the right of the McDonald's, and this picture has the refrigerated section to its left. But some good news is that you can see the doorway which actually does line up with my original photo. So even though the location was wrong here, I think it actually helped because it gave us a fuller view of the area around the McDonald's to get a better guess at whether or not this photo was truly taken at the Walmart I went to as a kid. But it also meant that I'd have to go all the way back to Alabama to take another photo to the left of the refrigerated section. And honestly, I kind of can't believe I was stupid enough to not remember my own trip to this Walmart in 2017. That imprint where a McDonald's sign used to be was in the spot of the deli they were building in that exact same location. And wouldn't you know it, what was next to the refrigerated section? The deli. And the exact same post in the McDonald's picture is present at a much more reasonable distance to the back wall. Obviously we can't really know since it's unknown how far the McDonald's protruded into the pathway and how far it back into the wall it went, but I'd say this photo is convincing enough evidence for me, since my memory of eating at that McDonald's at the age of 6 or 7 isn't going to be convincing enough for some of you. I truly believe that this is the McDonald's I went to as a child in Alabama. Now I must stress, this is all the evidence I could gather, as there really isn't that much of it to begin with, and it's kind of a mystery no one else really cares about but me. And on top of that, it's something I have a pretty minimal connection to. I'm not from the town in which this Walmart is located, and before the production of this video, I had only been inside twice, and about a decade apart at that. But I've never believed my solution to a mystery more than I have with this. One counter to this could be the angle at which I took the photo, where the post doesn't exactly line up with the girder to be the same distance from the back wall as the original photo. But I also do think some amount of reconstruction has been done to the deli to not be imprinted so far back into the wall, as there is an indent to the back wall in the McDonald's which is not present in the photo of the deli. Also, I think the fact that it's known where most of the other arch entrance McDonald's were and none of them were mine makes me even more confident this meme photo is the one that I went to as a kid. As because of the diversity of designs, there were only so many of these so if there were any photos of my McDonald's, they would have to be this one or simply not exist at all. And I highly doubt that in its entire existence there was ever a McDonald's that zero people took a photo of. Even if I didn't have all the evidence I had, that right there would be enough for me to make the conclusion, but obviously for some of you it wouldn't, so that's why I made this video. We will probably never know for certain, and that kind of bugs me. For as much as complaining about retail and fast food architecture is kind of a stupid thing to do, it does fall in line with my mission of documenting lost media on this channel, and I do think an in-store restaurant does fall into the category of lost media. We will never have back what we did in that era, and while it saddens me, I know that reliving the past through lost media is an important thing to do. Because of that, lost media enthusiasts have a unique place in society. So whether it's a Walmart McDonald's or an obscure Flash game, Never let go of the past, because if you let it, it will certainly let go of you first.